Greetings, Pokéfans! Michael here, and today I'll be going over the strongest new Pokémon in Pokémon Scarlet and Violet. I'll be doing a ranking slash countdown of the top 32, so numbers 32 through 30 are Armor Rouge, Cerulege, and Glamora. Uh, I should explain. In years past, whenever I've done the strongest Pokemon countdown videos, I've ranked them based on their base stat total. But whenever there's a tie of Pokemon with the same base stat total, I've broken that tie by ranking them based on their general competitive prowess. However, in this generation, there are 16 Pokemon with the exact same base stat total. Trying to rank all of those based on competitive viability would be an impossible task for someone who knows a lot about competitive, but is definitely not a full-fledged expert. So instead, so I don't end up making rankings that are just wrong and bad, whenever there's a tie, I'll say these Pokemon are these number ranges, and then I'll just kind of generally go over all of them. So as I said, numbers 32 through 30 are Armor Rouge, Cerulege, and Glamora, with a base stat total of 525. Armor Rouge and Cerulege having the same base stat total makes sense, since they're a split evolution. But while 525 is quite good, I don't foresee them becoming beacons of OP-ness. I need to change that word. <laughs> I don't foresee them becoming beacons of top tier play. They both hit quite hard, but aren't really fast enough or bulky enough to allow those hits to happen a lot of the time. I could be wrong. There's a pretty decent chance I'll end up being wrong about a lot of Pokemon in this video, but as of now, it seems like they're facing an uphill battle. But they are both very cool. And what really matters here? As for Glamora, it's in a similar boat with hitting hard, but not being really speedy or bulky. It does have an interesting ability though in Toxic Debris, which scatters toxic spikes whenever it's hit by an attack. I think that could come in handy, but to me it seems more like a useful ability in singles, since there's a lot more switching there, and therefore entry hazards are more valuable. Since the official format, VGC, is double battles, I feel like it's not gonna end up seeing much play there. Next is another tie, this time with four Pokemon. Numbers 29 through 26 are the fully evolved starters, Meowskareta, Skeledurge, and Quackwavel, plus Don Dozo, all with a base stat total of 530. Meowskareta's stat spread is at first enticing since it is very fast and has good physical attack. Additionally, its signature move Flower Trick can't miss and always crits, so that's really awesome. Plus, its hidden ability is Protean, one of the best abilities in the game. Or should I say, it used to be. Protean used to make it so you changed types every single time you attack, thus not only giving you the stab boost for every attack, but also making it really hard for your opponent to hit you for super effective damage since you're constantly changing types. However, in this generation, Protean has been nerfed, making it so it only activates once per switch in. So it can happen again if you switch out and switch back in, but if you go in and you don't come back out, Protean happens once, and that's bad? I could still see this being useful for Meowskareta since its regular grass dark typing is awful defensively, having a whopping seven weaknesses, including a four times one, but I don't think Protean saves it enough to make it amazing. Essentially, Meowskareta feels like a mixed bag in that it could be good, but you would have to utilize Terastalizing or worse than it used to be Protean to make it work. Skeledurge doesn't seem great in my opinion. It's pretty slow and while its bulk is decent, to me it doesn't seem good enough to make up for its five weaknesses. Torch Song can get scary if you're not careful though, boosting its special attack with each usage. Maybe it could be good on a Trick Room team. To me though, Quackquavel seems like the strongest of the starters. It's got quite high attack, and while its speed isn't great, its signature move Aqua Step boosts its speed just by using it. Add on the fact that its hidden ability is Moxie, which boosts its attack every time it KOs something, and you have a Pokemon with the potential to set up and sweep without actually having to use a setup move. Oh, also it can heal with Roost. Could be something to consider. Seems like it might be a good way to quack quavel dance all over your opponent's grave. Boo. The final 530 Pokemon is Don Dozo, and this thing is wild. In a double battle with Tatsugiri, Tatsugiri goes into Don Dozo's mouth? 
which gives Dondozo a double Omni Boost, makes Tatsugiri immobile and impossible to hit, and prevents any switching out. Additionally, Dondozo gets Order Up, a dragon type move that boosts Dondozo's stat depending on which color Tatsugiri is in its mouth. Once Dondozo faints, Tatsugiri exits its mouth. You're essentially creating an extremely powerful Pokemon in exchange for it being a two versus one battle. However, some people are already coming up with strategies that make this setup even crazier. Turn one, Tatsugiri holding a toxic orb uses Endure while its partner uses Explosion. You send in Dondozo and Tatsugiri hops into its mouth and then faints from the poison at the end of the next turn. You then send in Flamigo with Co-Star, its ability which makes it copy the double Omni boost from Dondozo. You've wiped out half your Pokemon in exchange for having two double Omni boosted Pokemon. It's insane and supposedly happening a lot right now in online ladders, but it remains to be seen whether the Tatsugiri Dondozo combo ends up being viable long-term. It's interesting and cool, but it's super predictable as a result. So I can't wait to see if people are able to make it work. Haha, <laughs> it's I, Grunty Boy. Hey man, cool headphones. Thank you. They're from Raycon, actually, the sponsor of today's video. The holiday season has been crazy for me, but whether it's Raycon's earbuds, speakers, or headphones, their premium sound has been life-saving as I've been running around. The useful features, almost custom comfortable fit, and up to 54 hours of battery life have been amazing. Makes sense. I love the Raycons I have for going on walks or doing some work around the house. Also, thanks to them being half the price of other premium audio brands and everyone deserving quality sound, they make excellent gifts. Oh, I agree. Too bad that one guy won't be getting his. What? Um. Oh, I, I'm sorry. Was that unclear? I, I stole these. I said I've been busy and it's been busy with crime. Gotta earn my place on the naughty list somehow. Grunty boy, you've grown as a person this year. Buy him a replacement. For the next month, Raycon is having a countdown to Christmas with a new pop-up flash deal for you to take advantage of every single day. So you can look out for a pair to replace the ones you stole at a great price. Ugh, fine. Your holiday morals are so irritating. Wait, what's this warm, fuzzy feeling? Am I sick? You're fine. Click the link in the description below or go to buyraycon.com slash mnjtv to get 15% off site-wide with code HOLIDAY. There will also be new pop-up deals every day during Raycon's countdown to Christmas, so I'll try to keep the description box updated with the latest offers. Sounds good, I'll get on that right away. And in the meantime, I'll try to figure out another way to get onto the naughty list. Oh, maybe I'll chew with my mouth open. Ta-ta! Number 25 is not a tie. It's just Annihilate, the long-needed evolution for Primeape. With a base stat total of 535, I could see this Pokemon being pretty good. It gets both Inner Focus and Defiant, two abilities that stop Intimidate, one of, if not the best abilities in the game, especially in the official doubles format. Additionally, Ghost Fighting is fantastic offensive typing, with every Pokemon in the game unable to resist both types, except Hisui and Zorua and Zoroark, which are immune to both. Beyond its stab moves though, it's got an insanely wide move pool, learning at least one solidly powerful physical attack for every type except Fairy, Psychic, Steel, and Water. Its only setup move is Bulk Up, but still, this thing can do a lot. Numbers 24 and 23 are two Steel types, Golden Go and King Ambit, both with base stat totals of 550. Golden Go is interesting to me. It's got massive special attack, okay bulk, and okay speed. Normally that would be a problem, since you would need to either live hits or hit first. But Golden Go has some things going for it that help cancel that out. Steel Ghost is quite good typing, it's a significant reason Aegislash was so good, and its ability makes it immune to all status moves, which is insane. No status conditions, no stat drops, no other effects like Leech Seed, unless they come from a direct hit or an ability. Plus its signature move, Make It Rain, which is probably the best named attack in the game, is a steel equivalent to Overheat or Draco Meteor, but it only drops its special attack by one stage instead of two, and it hits both enemies in a double battle. With one Make It Rain followed by a nasty plot, Golden Go ends up stronger than it was before, not back to square one. I'm not immediately convinced that this Applejack's mascot covered in gold will end up being a top tier Pokemon, but I could see it being interesting. King Gambit, the wild looking evolution of Bisharp is also interesting to me. It gets the excellent Defiant ability, but it also has a new ability called Supreme Overlord, 
which gives it a 10% boost to its attack power for every party member that's fainted at the time it's sent in. This is probably not better than Defiant in a 4v4 double battle VGC setup, since the biggest boost you're likely to get is 20%, but in a single battle, sending it in last when you're at the end of your rope could turn the tide, especially with its monstrous 135 base attack. However, you must keep in mind it is quite slow, only 50 base speed, but its bulk is respectable, 100 HP, 120 defense, and 85 special defense. I can see this Pokemon doing some serious damage on Trick Room teams as long as it doesn't get punched. By the way, I have some exciting merchandise available at mnjtvmerch.com. The base form Mighty Plush, my cute little mascot, is back in plushy form. Sold this earlier this year, and it's the best-selling single item I've ever sold. The Team Sky hoodie is available in limited edition black, and the Team Sky shirt is available in limited edition pastel red. Also, we ended up with some extra inventory of the green Team Sky hoodie and the white Team Sky shirt, so those are available, surprise, on sale right now. As of filming this, all of these are still available at mnjtvmerch.com, but they're all limited quantity. This is not a limited time pre-order, so once they sell out, they're gone, if they haven't sold out already. So if you want something, pick it up soon, because if you don't, someone else will, mnjtvmerch.com. We now reach the part of the countdown with the 16-way tie. Numbers 22 to seven include the majority of the Paradox Pokemon and all four of the Ruin Legends all of which have a base stat total of 570. As I said, I could not possibly hope to rank all of these, so I'm just gonna go over some interesting info about all of them, starting with the Paradox Pokemon. All the ancient Pokemon have Protosynthesis as their ability, which boosts their best stat, aside from HP, by 30%, or 50% if it's speed, in harsh sunlight or if they're holding a booster energy, at which point the booster energy is used up. The boost is separate from stat modifiers, and it goes away if the sunlight does or if you switch out. All the future Pokemon have Quark Drive, functionally the same, but swap out harsh sunlight for electric terrain. These abilities seem quite good to me. These Pokemon work really well on sun-based or electric terrain-based teams, since you can give boosts to Pokemon that normally would not get a boost from that weather. So like the ancient Pokemon benefit from harsh sunlight, even though none of them are fire type. Although it's important to remember weather and terrain I don't feel like they're gonna see as much use this generation as they did last generation. The primary reason being that max moves that cause them just by using them no longer exist. But even without the environmental effects, you still have the booster energy option. That can give you a pretty significant free instant boost to whatever stat you want with limitations, of course. To me, speed seems like the best stat to boost because it gets the largest boost and speed is pretty darn important in Pokemon battling. It's not always gonna be an option because if your Pokemon's base speed is too low, it's never gonna be your best stat. But for fast sweepers, that's pretty significant. So all the Paradox Pokemon have solid abilities, but these 12 specifically also have very good base stat totals of 570, which for context is equal to the Tapus and most of the Ultra Beasts, most of which had at least some success in competitive play. Overall, they're all strong, but let's take a closer look at each of them. Great Tusk is a physical tank. Great HP, fantastic attack and defense, middling speed, and poor special defense. Its move pool is decently wide, including both close combat and the new ground type version of close combat, Headlong Rush. Two very powerful moves that are 100% accurate. I could see it being a Terastalize user since ground fighting is great on offense, but has six weaknesses on defense. If you don't want to use booster energy, an Assault Vest could also be used to help with its poor special defense, turning it into a formidable bulky attacker especially against steel types. Root Bonnet is a grass dark type, which as I've mentioned is awful defensively. Seven weaknesses, including a four times weakness to bug. However, despite that, I do think it has potential to fulfill a similar role as its descendant Amoongus, thanks to getting rage powder and having better bulk. Add on its reliable recovery, access to Spore, and ability to hit really hard if need be, and I think Brute Bonnet could overtake Amoongus as a support Pokemon, maybe. Like I said, Grass Dark is rough defensive typing, and I don't think you're gonna wanna Terrastalize a support Pokemon, since Terrastalize has a lot of offensive benefits. Sandy Shocks has excellent special attack and solid speed, but its move pool is quite narrow. 
I feel like it would need to be your main terrestrialized Pokemon, likely into something good against grass, since electric and ground struggle against that. There is something to say for a Pokemon good against steel, though. Screamtail is so funny to me because this angry Jigglypuff is now faster than Latios. It's also one of the few Pokemon that is both fast and bulky, with all its stats being good except its offense. Because of this, I see it in a speedy support role, getting things like Wish, Fake Tears, Screens, Weather, or Trick up before other Pokemon can move. Yes, you do usually want a prankster Pokemon doing that kind of stuff because it gets priority for those status moves, but prankster can be stopped by an opposing dark type or abilities that stop priority, which are becoming more prevalent. Although, one thing I will say though, why can't Screamtail learn Screech? Scream is in its name? Fluttermane is nasty good. It's already been banned in Smog on OU, which is not the official format, but that should still be taken note of. With stellar special attack and speed, 135 each, and the fact Protosynthesis can make it 50% faster instantly with the booster energy, and this thing is set up to sweep. Ghost Fairy also only has two weaknesses and a whopping three immunities, and almost no Pokemon resist that stab combo. Add on the fact that it has a super wide move pool, and you've got one of the scariest new Pokemon added, if not the scariest. Slitherwing has an uphill battle, which is a bigger deal than previously since it can't fly anymore. Its attack is great, special defense is good, and everything else is all right, but its typing isn't great. Bug fighting has four weaknesses, one of them four times, which isn't terrible, but it's also not good on offense, being resisted by flying, poison, ghost, and fairy. It could be a terrestrialized Pokemon, but I worry neither its bulk or speed are high enough to use it over something else. Iron Treads has a similar spread to Great Tusk, but it's faster, hits less hard, and is more balanced in bulk. I think this allows it to potentially be better than Great Tusk, since it's better suited to outspeeding things and has better defensive typing. Ground Steel is also pretty solid on offense, and it has coverage to hit the few Pokemon that resist both. I like Great Tusk more design-wise, by a lot, but I do think Iron Treads might end up being the better competitive Pokemon. Iron Moth is set up for success. While not as good as Fluttermane, it is still quite fast and hits very hard. Fire Poison is interesting typing, most notably for being good against Steel and Fairy, the two best types in the game, but it of course has a four times weakness to ground, which is a good type in general. So a defensive terrestrialization could help. Its move pool is also quite wide, so I do see this being a force to be reckoned with. Iron Hands is one of only two Paradox Pokemon, excluding the Legends, whose type matches its abilities environment. None of the ancient Pokemon are fire type for the sunlight, but Iron Hands is an electric type on electric terrain, meaning it's extra useful if you set it up since it'll get both the cork drive and the terrain boost to its electric moves. That's really helpful since its only real electric physical options are Wild Charge and Thunder Punch. In regards to stats, it's very bulky, hits super hard, and is very slow. I would love to see how this would perform on a Trick Room electric terrain team. Iron Jugulus is yet another solidly speedy Pokemon with high attack power. It doesn't excel in these areas as much as others, but it gets a bit more bulk to balance that out. It has four weaknesses and two immunities, which is solid, and the dark flying stab combo is only resisted by a few Pokemon. It also gets Tailwind, which is good support, and its move pool overall is pretty wide. In general, I think it's solid. Iron Thorns is a bit weaker than not Robot Tyranitar, but it does have significantly fewer weaknesses, unfortunately still having a four times one. It's solidly bulky and hits really hard though, so I could see it having some success, maybe with a weakness policy like original Tyranitar often uses. Iron Bundle is a Delibird that's actually good? Weird, right? It's very fast, 136 base speed, and it has great special attack at 124. Unfortunately, its move pool is extremely narrow. Its only special coverage move being Air Cutter. Water Ice is pretty decent offensively though, only being stopped in its tracks by water types, but Iron Bundle can learn Freeze Dry. Maybe it'll have some fun terrestrializing and then using Terra Blast for more coverage. So that covers all the 570 base stat total Paradox Pokemon, but there are four more. The Ruin Legendaries, Ting Lu, Qian Pao, Wo Qian, and Qi Yu. They all have a move called Ruination, which halves the target's HP, which can be useful in certain situations. They all have different abilities that do the same thing though. Lower a specific stat by 25% for all Pokemon on the field, except the Pokemon themselves. This is great in single battles, but basically excludes all of them from viability in double battles. 
I'll get into more details with them. Ting Lu is ground dark and has insane HP, huge attack and defense, middling special defense, and poor special attack and speed. Its ground dark typing isn't great, having six weaknesses, but it's pretty good on offense. Its Vessel of Ruin ability drops all other Pokemon's special attack by 25%, which can be helpful in singles to further shore up its bulk, but in doubles, it means it can only be partnered with physical attackers. Since the official format has you bringing four Pokemon to a battle, that means you'd have to use four physical attackers, since Ting Lu is a physical attacker. and. That's not smart, balance-wise. Qian Pao is Dark Ice, which is awful on defense. Qian Pao is a speedy attacker, though, having a blistering 135 base speed and strong 120 physical attack. Its power is boosted even further, though, since its Sword of Ruin ability drops all other Pokemon's defense, making Qian Pao hit even harder. Its move pool is middling, but I think it's wide enough to have success as a sweeper, especially if it terastalizes away from its poor defensive typing. I cannot stress this enough though, that only applies to single battles. There is no situation in where it's acceptable to lower one of your own Pokemon's defense intentionally. Well, okay, not no situation, but to me that seems like too high a price to pay. Wo Qian is underwhelming to me. Grass Dark, as we've discussed several times, a lot of these, this generation, stinks as defensive typing, and Wo Qian's spread is designed for it to be more of a tank. Its Tablets of Ruin ability boosts its effective defensive bulk since it drops all the other Pokemon's physical attack, but its move pool is pretty shallow, not even getting reliable recovery synthesis despite being a grass type. Combine that with it only being able to pair with a special attacker in doubles, and you have what I believe to be the worst of the Ruin legendaries. Finally is Chi Yu. Like with Qian Pao, it's not viable in double since it drops its own ally's special defense. However, that makes it hit harder in singles, which improves its already monstrous special attack. It gets minimal coverage moves though, and while fast at 100, it isn't as fast as it probably needs to be. Okay, whew, that's finally all the 570 based at total Pokemon. If it wasn't obvious, Fluttermane, definitely the best one of that bunch. This brings us to number six and number five, a tie between the last two Paradox Pokemon, if you don't count the legendaries as Paradox Pokemon, which I guess they kind of are. Anyways, it's number six and five, Roaring Moon and Iron Valiant. Roaring Moon is a beast. Very high attack and speed and pretty decent bulk to go with it. Its move pool is quite wide as well, and it even gets Dragon Dance and Tailwind to boost itself alongside Protosynthesis. Its main problem is being decimated by fairies, but you now have the option to terastalize it into a steel type, then destroy them with Iron Head. I feel confident Roaring Moon will be quite a tough Pokemon to fight against. Iron Valiant is less straightforward, but interesting. It's also quite fast, but it actually is viable as a mixed attacker, since its physical and special attack are both high. This means its move pool is extremely wide and versatility leads to viability. One has to be careful though, since it being good in both offenses and speed means it's pretty frail, and fairy fighting has five weaknesses. Terastalizing is a powerful thing though, and for Iron Valiant, because it learns so many moves, you likely don't have to lean on Terra Blast. Number four is this generation's pseudo legendary, Bax Calibur. By definition, that means it has a 600 base stat total. It's solidly bulky and solidly speedy, and then has brutally high physical attack. This can be amplified even further by its ability Thermal Exchange, which boosts its attack every time it's hit by a fire type move. It still takes damage from them, unlike an ability like Sap Sipper, but in exchange, Bax Calibur cannot be burned which is a big deal for a physical attacker. You put a Baxcalibur next to a Pokemon spamming Lava Plume? That Baxcalibur could kill anything. Its move pool is quite wide, including setup moves like Dragon Dance and Swords Dance. Plus it gets access to Icicle Spear. By holding the new item Loaded Dice, you can make Icicle Spear guaranteed to hit four or five times, making its effective power 100 or 125 and circumventing Focus Sashes or Sturdy in the process. It's got a chunk of weaknesses, but once again, terastalization can help with that and give you stab for one of its many coverage moves. Trust me on Baxcalibur being very good. I have one on my team in my playthrough, and it's done most of the late game work. Number three is a Pokemon that I, I frankly cannot believe exists. 
Palafin. Palafin normally looks just like Finison, but with a heart on its chest. However, if you switch it out, then back in, it turns into its hero form thanks to its ability, Hero to Zero. And this thing has a preposterous base stat total of 650. 650 for this stupid dolphin. That's only 20 points less than some of the box art legendaries. That includes an absurd 160 base attack stat, the same as Mega Blaziken, alongside decent bulk and solid speed. It gets solid coverage as well, and pure water typing is very good defensively. However, as I mentioned before, how this form is unlocked is it has to enter the field, switch out, and then come back. It does have some strategic ways of doing this, such as flip turn, a slightly weaker water type version of U-turn, and the eject button, which will switch Palafin out if hit by a move. I look forward to seeing if people can make this work, because if they can, then hero form Palafin is crazy strong. But if you have to start with zero form, which only has about 450 base stat total, and people are prepared for it and take it out, before it can switch out and come back in, then it's not as useful. It's definitely gimmicky, but it's not as much of a disqualifying gimmick as like slacking with Truant. Finally, numbers two and one are the box art legendaries, Koridon and Miraidon. As you might imagine, being box art legendaries, they're very good. Although, I think Miraidon is gonna be better. Koridon has stellar attack and speed, great defense, and solid HP and defense, meaning it's useful as a sweeper and also hard to KO. Miraidon has a very similar spread, but swap the physical stats and special stats. Both of them have pretty wide move pools, with Koridon's being exceptionally wide, and their abilities, Aura Chalcum, not sure I'm saying that right, I'm gonna Google it. Aura Chalcum. Oh, it's Oracalcum, okay. Oracalcum Pulse and Hadron Engine boost their best offensive stat in Harsh Sunlight or Electric Terrain, respectively. Both things that are summoned when the Pokemon enters the field. The difference, though, is that Miraidon is Dragon Electric type, meaning one of its stab types is boosted by the environment it creates. From its ability alone, Miraidon's electric attacks almost double in power, getting a 50% boost from the electric terrain and a 30% boost from Hadron Engine's effect on all of Miraidon's special attacks. With the stab boost included, Miraidon's Electro Drift goes from 100 base power to just shy of 300 power, and that assumes it's a neutral hit. Koridon, meanwhile, summons Harsh Sunlight, and while it does get physical fire moves like Fire Punch, Flare Blitz, and Flame Charge, none of them are stab. That's because Koridon is a dragon fighting type, and thus would have to terastalize to get Fire Stab. Additionally, Dragon Electric is better typing, having only four weaknesses, while Dragon Fighting has five, including a four times fairy weakness. To be clear, both of these Pokemon are amazingly strong. They're box art legendaries, obviously. But if there's a format that allows restricted Pokemon, I do think of the two, Maridon is probably gonna get used more. I do still prefer Koridon design-wise, though. So there we have it. Those are the strongest new Pokemon in Scarlet and Violet. Of all of these, the one that stands out to me the most is Fluttermane. It's already banned in Smog on Singles, and as for doubles, if it can stay away from physical attacks, then it's gonna be quite the threat. Thanks so much for watching with an extra special thanks to my patrons over on Patreon who are helping support my channel independent of fluctuating YouTube ad rates. If you wanna help support me in the same way, the link's in the description below. And if you wanna check out some more of my fun Pokemon content, I recommend these videos here. All right, that's all I have for now. So until next time, big fans, gotta catch them all.